Hi. Now, for part B here, we're told that an adult female is now chosen at random, and given that she is tall, find the probability that she has a height greater than 180 centimetres. Now, already we've defined a random variable x as being the height of a female. And if I just bring that back up again here, I've defined it here. Um, we've got two sketches that I'd encourage you to draw. One of our normal distribution for the random variable x with the mean 160 and directly below the standardized normal distribution with a mean of zero which tells us how many standard deviations, remember, any value is above or below the mean. Now, what we've got here then, in order to work this question out, we're told that someone is tall if they've got a height greater than 170 centimetres. And in this part, part A, we worked out that it was 0 0.10565. So what I've got to do is look at how 180 centimeters let's just mark it in here as this value down here 180 centimeters this is our observed value x which is 180 and we want to compare what proportion of this probability is when compared to being greater than 170 centimeters okay so in other words what we're looking for is the probability of x the height of a female being greater than 180 centimeters given that we know that x is already greater than 170. We often refer to this as conditional probability and you should be familiar with the concept that for questions like this the probability of a given b let's say is equal to the probability of a and b all divided or compared with the probability of the given event b. Okay, so this is a basic standard formula that you should be familiar with. Let's just box that down there. Okay, so how does that reflect here? Well, what we've got then is the probability that x must be, well, we we want both events to be true, A and B. And so if you've got to be greater than 170 centimetres and greater than 180 centimetres, then obviously the logic dictates that this must be the probability of X being greater than 180, okay, for both of these events to be true. And then that's divided by the given event, which is the probability that X is greater than 170. So essentially what we're doing is working out how this area, the probability of being more than 180, compares to being greater than 170. Okay, I'm not going to mark the 170 on, but we just want to compare this proportion, this area, with being greater than 170, if that makes any sense. So... I need to work out what the corresponding z value is for this 180. So coming down there, this z value here, remember, is given by z equaling the observed value, x, minus the mean, all divided by the standard deviation. So what we've got here is 180 minus 160, and all of that is divided by the standard deviation deviation 8 and if you work that out it comes to 2.5 so 180 is two and a half standard deviations above the mean and it's this area then that we're after which represents that probability of being greater than 180 so what we've got here is this is exactly the same as the probability of z being greater than 2.5 and this is compared with the probability of x being greater than 170. So I'll just put that in as x being greater than 170 there. Now, to work out the probability of z being greater than 2.5 is fairly straightforward if you've got a calculator that handles statistical calculations like this. 
If not, then you're going to have to use tables and that's going to be exactly the same as working out 1 minus the probability of z being less than 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. And this is divided by the probability of x being greater than 170, which is this value up here that we worked out in part A. I'll put that in as 0.10565. So we'll come down here, OK? If you looked up in your tables for this value of z being less than 2.5, you should find that it was 0.99379. So you'd be doing 1 minus 0.99379. 379 divided by 0 0.10565. So if you work this out, then on your calculator, you should find you get 0 0.05877 and so on. And then say, rounding this to three significant figures, it's going to be 0 0.059 to 3SF, three significant figures. So quite a tricky question when you get the conditional probability ones like this. Remember, for the numerator here then, you've got to have both conditions to be true. And we have to be greater than 180, like say 181 would be greater than 170 and also greater than 180. So it must be greater than 180. So I hope that uh, helps you out anyway if this caused you any problem.